welcome to Geeky Hijinks, Ho and Mischief Makers, and today we're looking at Quiet Place 2. So you're probably wondering why I was very quiet in my intro, and that's because I've had some complaints from our neighbours next door. Apparently I'm too loud when I'm doing my review, so uh, to stop my channel from being banned because they have that power. I'm going to be a little bit more quiet, still energetic, but a little bit more quiet than normal. So hopefully nothing around here causes any loud noises at all. So what's this film about exactly? Well, it takes place just after a What are you, what are you doing? That Sunday's cleaning day, sir. Yeah, I know it's cleaning day on a Sunday, but remember I told you when I'm doing my reviews, I'm quite loud and adding in hoovering at the same time is not going to help things. Come on, just do it later. Well, what can I do in the meantime then? I don't know, just put my headphones on and listen to music or something. Hmm, okay. <laughs> my god, my channel's gonna get shut down. So as I was saying, The Quiet Place 2 follows on straight after Quiet Place 1. The Abbott family, minus the dad, must now venture out and face the terrors of the outside world, but they soon realise it's not just the creatures that pose a deadly threat. Now straight out of the gate guys, I'm gonna tell you, I love this movie, it's so so good. And watching it in cinema, because watching it at home, doesn't do it justice and I'm really gutted I missed the first one because I can only imagine how good that would have been. But I can't decide which one I prefer, the first one or the second one. And to be honest with you, I think they're equally as good. The first one's not better than the second, but the second one's not better than the first. But I think if they can knock out a good trilogy, if they can do a third one and it's just as good as the first two, they could have such a perfect horror trilogy on their hands. So what I like about this film, I love the acting and the characters. Now in the first film, John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Millicent Ford, can't remember the son's name, I'm sorry, but they gave the film the weight it needed for you to take it seriously, because they could have really hammed it up, made it cheesy so you don't take it seriously. But they don't, they treat this film like any dramatic role, so it's like a horrid family drama, and as a result, as you can all tell, paid off everyone of the first one, or at least I do. So going to the second one, John Krasinski, he's in the beginning part, excellent part of the film, but he's not in it for the rest of the film because he's dead, he got killed in the first one. So he needs something to give us from that boost, a bit of energy that he need to make the sequel just as good or better than the first. Enter Killian Murphy. Now Killian Murphy is an excellent actor. I don't think I've ever seen him in a bad role in anything. Like what was he in like? The Batman films, The Scarecrow, he's in Inception. He's Christopher Nolan's go-to guy in most of his films. Uh, Peaky Blinders, of course, and 28 Days Later, one of my favourite horror movies. He's perfect, and in this film, I love the fact he's in it so much, and his scenes with Millicent Ford are some of my favourite, and that's why I like, I'm toss like tossing and turning. Tossing and turning? I'm not in bed. That's why I'm deliberating to myself which one I prefer the most, first or second, because the first one is more complete. You have these set characters, A to B. Now, in the sequel, you have the same sort of like dynamic, but when it gets to the Killian Murphy scenes with Millicent, like I love that kind of stuff. Like I literally was like getting sweaty, I was about to say sweaty pit syndrome. I was getting like sweaty palm syndrome. I was thinking, oh God, like this is like The Last of Us mixed with Game of Thrones. Please, like, nothing bad. I'm not gonna give any spoilers away as to what happens, but it was giving me those like feelings of no one's safe in this film. Now Millicent Ford, who plays Regan, is fantastic. She plays the death daughter of the Abbott family. And she's amazing. Like, there's a good portion of the film where you're with her, and that's a lot of like responsibility to put on an actor that young in a film like this. But myself and everyone in the audience were just every time she was on the screen and there was parts of a train, everyone was just deadly silent and wanting her to get to her objective, get to the goal that she set out for herself. And she she did an amazing job. Emily Blunt is fantastic as always. Now her scenes were my least favourite in the film. That's not because she was terrible, she's excellent, but yeah, she pops out for a second or two, but the, the location in which she's in with the son and her baby, they're always there, and for me, at least with um, Regan and Killian Murphy's character, I forget his name, but they're always in a different place, so there's always a different kind of threat, whereas in this little place, there's only going to be one kind of scenario, and for me, it was good, but it wasn't as exciting as everything else. And the suspense and the tension in this film is incredible and that's through the sound design as well because the film is called A Quiet Place so it's very deadly quiet so any little noise like me doing this now did nothing but in the cinema you're like this 
because you know those noises can mean death. So any little misstep, arm movement, it hits something, you're terrified at, and that's just genius writing and directing. And the jump scares in this film, now it's so easy to make a film that's disquiet and have loud noises to scare, but these feel earned because when these things do happen, like I said, it's to do with the sound and the timing. So when things do happen, whether it be some birds flying and making like the flapping wing noises, um, yeah, you could say, oh, that was a cheap jump scare, but in other films, in this one, it doesn't let that tension go because in most horror films you can watch, you build up to that, that suspenseful moment and jump scare. And then you relax, you laugh because you've been scared, but in this it's like, oh, jump scare. But you never come down too much because the threat of another looming like creature in the distance or another threat being around the corner is always there, so you never fully relax. Now the special effects in this film are excellent, like the close-up shots of the creatures. I don't know if they've got a name or not, but they look like Venom. They look like Venom from Spider-Man. I kind of got that carnage, venom -y feel when I look at them, uh, mixed with Stranger Things when their <laughs> mouths open wide. But in the first one, a lot, I had a lot of complaints about the CGI being unrealistic, but it's kind of like Jaws. You barely saw the shark, and when you did see the shark, obviously it was, I wouldn't say cheesy, they did the best they could with what they had. And I think the first one was a low budget film. So the same thing, they did the best of what they had available in regards to graphics, special effects, CGI. Um, in the second one, because of the success of the first, they got more of a bigger budget. So they can make the creatures look more realistic. So the close up shots look much better. And let's talk about the opening of this film, Day Zero. I love them. That was like a perfect opening to a film. One of the perfect openings to a film I've seen in a long time. It just started off nice and normal. Everyone's out and about. It showed you what happened, how the creatures got to Earth, the suspense, the, the tension, the music, everything. And I gave you some of this away in the trailer. Naughty trailer, should have kept this to yourself. But the, the opening scene was perfect. But what made me laugh about it was, but everyone's at the baseball game and they see, like, <laughs> this meteorite landing. Everyone's just so chill, like, did you see that? Yeah. Oh, well, let's just go home then. I'll be like, um, let's run away. Has, no, has anyone heard of the dinosaurs? Because I'm pretty sure they got wiped out by something like that in the sky. So everyone was pretty chill, which made me laugh. Didn't ruin the film for me, but I was thinking I'd be panicking way more than they are. But that opening scene is so, so good. Now, before I move on to my issues with the film, I'm just going to say one of my issues isn't the way the film ended. I know a lot of people were disappointed that the film just ended abruptly, just like that. I didn't have an issue with that, and I'm going to tell you why. John Krasinski has the third film in his head. He can see it from act one to act two to the finale. It's all done in his head. He's probably got a few bits written down. He just needs to get behind the camera and film it. And if that's the case, I don't mind. Yeah, I wanted more from the film, but sometimes less is more. Because I can wait maybe one or two years for the, for the third one. Because if it's as good as I hope it will be, we could have an amazing horror trilogy on our hands. So what issues did I have? PG, what did I just say to you? But sir, you told me to listen to music. Headphones. Headphones. Hmm, these look fancy. Please don't interruptions. The neighbours will be knocking on my door in a minute. They're going to report me. Okay, sir. Told you she's a whore. <laughs> yeah. So what issues did I have with the film? I had barely any issues, I'm not going to lie to you. I think the only issue I had was... The son made some stupid decisions. He should just stay where he was, like his mum told him, look after your baby brother. But instead, you wander off for no reason at all because you're an idiot, jeopardize your brother's life, your life, and your mum's. So when those scenes came on, I was like, oh, this is always an idiot in these type of films, but that is a nitpick and a half. Everything else I love, and that's literally the only issue I have. So overall, sir, guys, I- Sir, look. It seems, sir, that the neighbors that were complaining about us are moving away. Huh, <laughs> cool. Nothing to worry about anymore. So overall guys, this film is excellent. It's such a good film. The acting, the characters, the sound design, special effects, the tension, the suspense, the scares, and that opening scene, all combined to give you a really, really good film. Not just a good horror film, but a good horror family drama. It's excellent. Make sure you see it, especially in the cinema, because like being at the cinema for so long and having seen three films in there, Corella, uh, the Conjuring 3 and now this. You realise how important cinemas are. And you can watch this film at home, absolutely fine, but always make sure you get that cinema feeling first 
and then watch it at home in your own time and enjoy it that way. And the issues I had were very nitpicky. T pay no attention to those. I was just being nitpicky at best. I was just my own personal thoughts. So with everything said, guys, I'm going to give Quiet Place 2 a gold win because it is that good of a film. Nothing was perfect at all. Jurassic Park is my favourite film of all time. But even I can admit that's got flaws. But Quiet Place 2 is excellent. That's why it deserves this rating. So guys, that was my review for A Quiet Place 2. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was it a snooze fest? Or the greatest film you've ever seen? Come right to the comments and let me know because I genuinely am interested. And if you like this video, drop me his likes because it always does help. But until next time, stay out of trouble.